it's been so beautiful outside lately so I just really wanted to film this out here it's probably like 67 degrees right now and the Sun is shining and oh I love October let's jump into our first quarter update I'm not sure exactly what it was last year, but I just felt like I started out in burnout mode. And so we were not as, but I don't think that's all it is either. Cause like, I think that I just wanted to approach every day organically, change the lessons as needed, but I took it too far as far as like not making any kind of routine, not making any kind of habit, not forming any kinds of habits. I think I was just trying to put too much creative energy into homeschooling and that seemed like the good virtuous thing to do or whatever but in reality kids respond really well to predictability and routine and habit and sameness same as we as adults find comfort in it and so this year I went into this homeschool year saying like we are going to have a very habitual routine everything will be done the same way in the same order we will have open and go curriculum and we will just pick up where we left off from the day before on a time block so that was my attitude going into it was that we are just going to make this easy on ourselves and it has worked wonders we literally do everything the exact same way every day so our homeschool routine takes about three hours and we start with group read aloud at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. has been the sweet spot for us as far as what time we get started. First, I do everything that is not reading to get it out of the way. So my daughter is working on learning how to use the calendar. So she's supposed to update this little uh, wooden thingy we have where she puts the day of the week, the month, and the date of the month. Then I will ask the kids to recite some emergency information. I will ask them what century our read aloud story takes place in and also to show me on our globe where our story takes place. So right now we're reading A Cry from Egypt. It is biblical fictional history about the Israelites being freed from captivity in Egypt. So the kids are able to tell me this happened in 1300 BC. It happened in Africa. Here's Africa. Here's where Egypt is. They also know that the Nile is the big river that runs through Egypt. Then we do Spanish through Duolingo on my laptop. And once all those things are done, which only takes like 15 minutes, then we move into reading aloud. So read aloud is first we just spend five minutes on poetry. We read the poem of the day from Sing a Song of Seasons. If you have watched any amount of homeschooling videos, I'm sure you have seen this beautiful book. It is one of the most popular books for morning time in homeschooling right now for a reason. It's lovely. So we read the daily nature poem. Then we read one devotional from the Louis Giglio, How Great Is Our God, which we just completed two days ago and we moved into the third book third and final book I believe that Louis Giglio wrote reading that only takes about five minutes and that covers science and Bible then we move into whatever read aloud book we're on so we are loosely following the classical conversations cycle one which I believe is what CC is on this year just for history and geography. We don't follow CC for any other subjects. Cycle one is ancient history all over the world. Now, I cannot possibly cover all the ancient history all over the world. It's insane what the CC curriculum covers. I mean, nothing wrong with it. It's just a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. College level, a lot. So I just did the best I could and didn't worry about the gaps this year. We are starting with ancient Egyptian history, but I also have read aloud books for India, Japan, different countries in Europe. This book for Egyptian history, ancient history, and then another book we have for Japanese history. Those are our, my two biggest, so I'm going to try to get them done first. They are just literally the longest read aloud books we have to try and tackle this year. Silas is 10 years old and Daisy is seven year old to give you some perspective on this book and this has been the perfect reading level for them in A Cry From Egypt specifically. They both are retaining everything I read to them really really well. I was trying to read a chapter a day 
but it was taking like 20 to 30 minutes. The chapters are a good chunk and it was just too much time um, reading. And I know to some people that's fine. 30 minutes is not truly too long to read as a family and I know that. For us it was. So now I just time block read for 10 minutes and I stop wherever we are in the chapter, like at the end of a paragraph and resume right there the next day. That's working really, really well for us. So after we read those three books, read aloud is done. I always start again the same way so that there's no argument. I do handwriting and reading with Daisy, handwriting and reading with Silas, math with Daisy, math with Silas. Daisy gets a five minute break after read aloud before we start handwriting and reading. And then when I switch to handwriting and reading with Silas, that's automatically a 30 minute break for her. We use Math Lessons for a Living Education, which is faith-based and all about reading. Now, Silas is in all about reading level three. He's 10 years old and his reading went from zero to 60. Like he struggled to learn to read. He wasn't a solid reader until he was eight years old. And then it was like he didn't need any more instruction. Now he could work on spelling and handwriting, but I kind of wanted him to finish all four levels of the All About Reading curriculum just to kind of see the vision through. He is still finishing up level three, but he does not need it. He can finish at least one whole lesson a day, which is designed to take two or three days at a time. But he is OCD after my own heart and he does not like leaving things unfinished. So when I offered for him to just skip level three because it's that, I, and I never skip any levels. I just don't, I'm that parent. I'm like, you finish all the material, but he doesn't need it. He's like, I just wanna do all of it. So we are just breezing through level three unnecessarily right now. And I have level four ready to go, which he should be ready for in just a few weeks. He is still on level three math lessons for a living education, and he really should be on four. This is just where I slacked last year and there will be no slacking this year. So he is doing double lessons right now. And again, should be through that really, really soon. He's on like week 26 or 27. And obviously it's a 36 week program like the traditional school year. And then I have level four math living for math lessons for a living education ready to go as soon as he's done. Something I added on to his math lessons is flashcard work. I really underestimated when I started homeschooling how incredible flashcards are, how effective they are. Because often when the student looks at a worksheet, all they see is 50 problems that they have to do in one sitting and they can't get past the feeling of overwhelm. Flashcards eliminate that. You are only asking them to even look at one problem at a time and it sharpens their skills so quickly. I am doing just like five minutes of flashcard drills with Silas before I let him work on his actual curriculum. Highly recommend this, it helps so much. He's also semi-independent in his math work. Now reading, that won't work for us because he has to read out loud to me. But for math, like half the time, I can kind of do dishes and then check on him. He doesn't usually need help unless we're learning a new concept. So that is nice because this is my first experience with that because obviously up to this point, I've had to sit next to them for everything. Also, I'm not a huge fan of taking advantage of independent work. I just feel like I want to show my kids that I care about their education and that I'm willing to walk alongside them for everything I ask them to do. I just feel so strongly about that. For the most part, I still, I want to be present and available the whole time they're doing school rather than just saying they did it, but I'm not sure, you know, how much quality was in the learning. Daisy is seven years old and she's in level one of All About Reading and she's gonna be the same as her brother, eight years old when she's a solid reader because she's just about to turn eight and reading is just now finally clicking for her. It's so cool to see those light bulb moments, so cool to see her ask to read the first few pages of the first few words of anything before I read it to her because she's just very motivated. This is another area where flashcards saved the day for us. Now, yes, All About Reading has its own flashcard system, but when she really started to struggle with reading, I was really wanting to help her push past that. I didn't wait for the curriculum to introduce letters anymore. We just started going over the whole alphabet every day. 
every day she had to tell me all the sounds of the alphabet only the short sounds for the vowels and she's just now getting to the point where that's not really necessary anymore she pretty much knows her sounds and can just work on blending she also had got a little bit behind in level one math from last year and i did want her to finish that material she just needed it so she just finished that this past week and is um, like three lessons into math lessons for a living education level two and she's showing a lot of motivation there last year was by far the hardest homeschool year I had with her everything discouraged her um, she got upset very easily and there was still some of that moving into this year and I just put my patient hat on and I prayed and I kept trying different things different ways and I think that combined with consistency is what helped her push through combined with her just being ready she's ready to read she's motivated to go through school what do we need to work on we need to work on rising at 8 a.m. sharp I wake up one hour before my kids at 7 right now I yes I was trying 5 a.m. that didn't last basically I wasn't getting enough sleep and it was throwing me into migraines so it wasn't gonna be sustainable. So I'm back to sleeping from 11 or 12 to seven. Get up at seven, have my quiet time, my coffee, then wake the kids up at eight. It is like trying to wake up a 16 year old. Like I knew that teenagers like to sleep in and they're hard to wake up. Nobody told me how hard it can be to get a seven and 10 year old out of bed. Oh my goodness. They would sleep till 10 or 11 every day if I let them already. And I put them to bed plenty early enough, so it's kind of crazy. So any tips, feel free to drop them below on getting my kids out of bed. But they usually like roll out of bed at 8.30, 8.45, and then they're not able to get their chores done before we actually sit down in homeschool at nine sharp. So then they have to do it after homeschool, which they don't enjoy. So maybe if I just drive that home a bit more, that will create some motivation to get up the first time I tell them. I don't know, but that's what we need to work on. I'm getting up pretty consistently at seven, but we gotta get these kids up at eight. I also have been working really hard to create habits routine in chores and just have chores the same every day. For a minute, they had a list up on the refrigerator, but I didn't want them to need the list. I wanted it to just be four or five simple tasks that they do in the same order every day without having to think about it. So both of them have to get dressed, brush their teeth. They both have a couple extra chores. Silas is just doing dishes because we don't have a dishwasher. So doing dishes is quite the feat here. And then Daisy is supposed to feed the dog, pick up all the floors in the house so that she can start the Roomba or robot vacuum. And then my chore is doing the laundry and picking up after the dog in the yard. So those habits every day are mat like it has made the most massive difference in our house being tidy and cozy and nice. I'm definitely going to stay with that. That has been a good decision. Something I read in a book recently from another working homeschool mom, she said, and I'd never thought of this before, that she saw homeschooling her kids as her downtime. She just homeschooled one child and she's like, that's when I get to just like cuddle up and study books with my kid like I love that that's my break and I thought I've always seen homeschooling as work like I've never thought of it that way before but I think I could work on fixing my perspective in that way and it really is helpful just take the stress out of it if it's that hard to teach your child it's probably a little too advanced for them or there's probably an easier way to introduce it or there's probably something you're trying to add in that isn't necessary so just take a step back and learn at what feels right is right seeing it as same way as i would see giving myself a reading break to read fiction in the middle of the afternoon has been a game changer. Well, now it is October, and so we are moving straight into holidays and fall activities. And this is where things tend to go wrong for me because there's so many traditions I wanna do in fall and winter and around Christmas, and they're big and they're time consuming and they're expensive. So I'm going to have a different approach this year. We're going to do very simple traditions just a couple of months and I want to take few to no breaks as far as fall and Christmas are concerned. 
We usually end up taking the entire month of December off, which is fine because there's so many other small breaks we don't take through the year that it kind of evens out to being the same thing. But I do not want to take more than maybe one week off for Christmas this year. I just really want to focus on keeping the habit, keeping the routine, keeping the momentum, and catching up where the kids are a bit behind too. Some of the traditions are attending the Jack-O-Lantern Festival in Kentucky. Look it up. It is so incredible. So incredible. We'll be going to that soon. Doing pumpkin carving, of course, Halloween trick-or-treating. And then I need, I really want to look for something local to do for Christmas. I always say I will, and I used to try to take them on a Christmas vacation when I was married, but we could only afford to do that twice. I don't foresee myself being able to afford that this year. So just looking, maybe a light show or something like that that will be sustainable and affordable every year for us. So I'm just feeling very grateful and refreshed that this year is off to such a strong start. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want to see more videos like it, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Happy homeschooling.